Okay, what I think about Ascension Part 2. Uh, I just got up this morning and I can't, I just kind of, um, I uploaded just up, just did a video and I'm, uh, and then I was going to go back to sleep, but I can't, so I figured I'd do a Part 2 because I didn't, I wasn't able to finish my idea in the Part 1, so, um, yeah, um, as far as, uh, the Earth, uh, this, this whole exponential thing, um, I think as far as what I understand it, and I know I'm not like an expert, and if anybody is more expert than me, I'd sure love a video response, or, uh, even better, yeah, don't video respond me you don't want, but I mean, even better yet, if somebody knows more about this than me, get off your lazy ass and upload a goddamn video already, I'd love to watch it, <clears throat> um, so anyways, uh, now the idea is that, that we have the supermassive black hole in the sun, that is constantly collapsing, uh, and then, and then when something collapses, it spins faster, you know, like with the, uh, the the Olympic skaters, how they pull their arms in and they spin faster. This thing spins around pound so fast that even though the gravity is so strong, it actually flattens it out, and it flattens it out so much that it that the flattening goes all the way out to the edge of the galaxy. I saw this on a video that was attached to Christian CP's video page about something ascension, maybe, I don't know, but... So basically... Um, we, I think we, and I'm, man, I think I read this figure like 10 years ago, so I could be totally wrong, but we spin around the uh, galaxy once every 26,000 years. That's how long the, uh, the, uh, our solar system takes to get around the galaxy. Uh, just like it takes one year for our sun, our planet to go around the sun. Um, and then, but yet at the same time, that's exactly how long it takes for our Earth um, procession, the wobble on the Earth to take. Um, just like when you spin a top, when this top starts to fall down, it starts to wobble, well, that's what the Earth does. And um, on December 21st, 2012, that's when the center of the galaxy is going to be on the horizon of the Earth. Now what I understood that to mean is, I guess if you're on the uh, equator, the center of the galaxy will rise on the Earth. So I think what that means is that the spin of the Earth is going to line up with the spin of the galaxy. So uh, maybe the tilt of the Earth, some people, I guess most astronomers would say that the tilt of the Earth is due to um, the creation of the Earth and maybe it got, it got tilted because of some, like, asteroid that flew by and it tilted it out outside of its, its uh, orbit or whatever. And that's why it, it doesn't spin around in the same, like, perfectly aligned with the sun. Rather, it spins aligned, perhaps it spins aligned with the galaxy. And so maybe the spin of the Earth and the revolutions of the planets around the sun, how David Wilcock was saying, has to do with uh, the gravitational field and not some occurrence that happened. Something flew by and knocked it out of whack and then entropy just kept it going that way. So, but, but um, how gravity and the uh, valencies of the um, of the uh, revolutions of the planets around the sun are all locked in these these levels uh, of the sun representing different uh, dimensions. Um, maybe this plane around the galaxy has different levels, different valencies, representing different dimensions. So as the planet um, now, so maybe the planet 
is passing through something into a gal and um, down into uh, through different levels represented by galaxy that increase exponentially and so when we cross and so that's whenever we cross um, and maybe that's what causes pulse shifts because nobody knows what causes pulse shifts at least not as far as I know if, if somebody does please tell me but um, it um, it when we will actually cross the, the uh, plane the equator of the galaxy on December 21st 2012 I think as far as I understand and what that's going to do is it will make the planet itself vibrate at a, at a higher frequency, a higher dimension, enter in the fourth dimension, a dimension that is totally not, uh, it's above this dimension, so anything in dissonance, fourth dimension, <sighs> um, doesn't have anything to do with this dimension. So like somebody in the fourth dimension could walk through a wall, sort of thing. Okay, now, oh man, we're out of time. Okay, so now, basically, the idea that I have, or the question that I have, is when that happens, are people just going to disappear in the fourth dimension and then other people stay in the third dimension? Um, and the reasoning that David Wilcock has also is that is that you want people to believe that and have faith in that so that they get to go into the fourth dimension and then not pay attention and not try to convert people who are unconvertible who are going to stay in the third dimension. Um, that kind of sounds a lot like uh, Christians. You know, only there's the saved and the non-saved. Um, only the people of faith are the only people worthy of trying to convert and talk to and then everybody else just forget them because they're not going to sin um, I don't have that I wouldn't I don't really like that approach because number one I think you should be sharing yourself with everybody and not be discretionate uh, you don't know who is worthy so to speak you don't know who is receptible susceptible, so to speak. Um, I think David Wilcock was saying, no, I'm not saying he says it like he's in direct con contact with God. He, he just does lots, of, reads lots of books and puts it all together, but that 95% of humans will stay in the third dimension and only 5% of humans get to uh, ascend into the fourth dimension. Um, and maybe it was spirits who said that. I don't know. I can't remember. But I know Bashar, who is a gray alien, human hybrid, for the future, says that um, something about that, that you have to, um, you have to uh, make your decision on if you're going to be of a higher vibration now. Because if you're not, then you'll get you'll get left behind. Um, so if that means that you won't get to ascend into the fourth dimension, then this whole that not multiple dimension bifurcation, splitting of reality is actually true. I don't know. I don't know. I have an answer for everything, but I do not know. I'm going to go ahead and say I don't believe that. I don't. It's just too much, too out there for me. Um... I will digest what that means by um, thinking that when you die and you reincarnate, the earth will be in a fourth dimension. And so by the time you, if you, you should really have that um, idea of uh, the earth, you know, everything being one by the time you die. And if you don't, when you reincarnate, you'll reincarnate in a third dimensional world.
because the earth is going to be in the first dimension but I don't think everybody instantaneously is going to just disappear in front of each other's eyes that doesn't make any sense to me but I am out of time again oh my god okay hmm.